preparing you for your day with the latest information on the coronavirus and how it affects you. Yeah, we begin this morning with uh, what you can expect when businesses are allowed to finally reopen. Now, Mecklenburg County's uh, health director says don't expect to see temperature checks in large businesses like malls uh, once they reopen. Gibby Harris says thermometers are actually in really short supply right now. It's just not feasible to check everyone. The shoppers are asked not to go out if they're feeling sick. Today, Atrium Health is holding a donation drive that'll be from noon until four at six locations, which includes University City, Fort Mill, Pineville, and Huntersville. They'll collect uh, masks there, other personal protective equipment, including hand sanitizer. Check WSOC TV app for more details about how you can help out here. Starting Friday, North Carolina will move into phase one of the plan to reopen our state. It loosens restrictions on which businesses can open and what you can do. And it can't come soon enough for people who have been out of work or who are just tired of being stuck at home. But Governor Cooper stressed this will be a gradual process mm -hmm. and it all has to be done very carefully. We have Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Castor live for us in South Charlotte with a look at which businesses will be able to open and how the changes will be affecting all of us. Anthony? Phase one begins at 5 p.m. on Friday, and it essentially removes that non-essential business label and gives people more reasons that they are allowed to leave home, although the state does recommend that you wear a mask if you choose to leave. Now, here's what we can expect to see under that new executive order. More businesses can reopen, but store capacity will be set at 50 percent. You can gather with people in groups of 10 or less. State parks are allowed to reopen, and churches can hold outdoor services. Phase one to reopen the state takes baby steps on the road back to what we used to call normal. And for retailers, especially small businesses, it comes just in time. Several store owners we talked to say they are excited to get back to work, but they are still cautious and allowing employees to stay home if they want to. Uh, we want to really respect the folks that aren't comfortable coming into our store and, and show them that they're still important to us. We're going to wear masks and gloves keep a six foot distance and keep everything clean in the store. Starting Saturday, we're probably going to have our door open, but be very cautious. And keep in mind other businesses like barber shops and nail salons are not allowed to reopen until phase two. If things trend well, that could happen as early as May 22nd. But keep in mind here as well that the governor could extend phase one. Brittany. Anthony, also, we know there's a, another group that is pushing its own ideas for you know, how to relaunch the state's economy. What are the differences there? Yeah, the North Carolina Chamber of Commerce is really the largest business lobbying group in the state. And the main difference between their proposal and what we're seeing from Governor Cooper is that they want every business open right now. And that includes barbershops and nail salons as well as restaurants. If those were to open, they would have to follow strict social distancing and sanita excuse me, sanitation guidelines as well. Okay, Brittany? We got to just see how well we do with all of these changes as we work to reopen. Anthony, thank you. And phase one, it could last two to three three weeks. That's if things go well. And then as Anthony mentioned, then comes phase two and that would lift the stay at home order and it would allow restaurants to open now, four to six weeks of that without any major setbacks. And then phase three would kick in increasing capacity at churches, restaurants and other businesses. And as state leaders plan this reopening, reopened North Carolina protesters again demonstrated outside of the General Assembly yesterday. About 100 people listened to the speakers talk about why they thought it was time to reopen and repeal the stay at home order. At least one person was taken into custody. Well, plans to reopen are closely tied to the number of cases that we are seeing. Yesterday, Dr. Mandy Cohen said North Carolina is flattening the curve, but there are still a lot of new cases. And during that update, the state identified 408 new cases in 24 hours. That's along with 22 new deaths. The state completed nearly 152,000 tests with about 12,000 coming back positive. In South Carolina, they're reporting a total of 6,841 cases of those 296 people have died. And we're getting used to seeing testing sites in major cities, but now people in the small Chesterfield County town of McBee have access to testing too. McBee is less than a thousand people and the Sand Hills Medical Foundation brought drive up testing to the town. Nurses use a nasal swab. They get the results back in two to four days. 
Most people made an appointment beforehand, but tests were available for anyone who wanted them, even if they didn't have symptoms. Clayton Ferguson told us that because people can be asymptomatic and still spread the disease, he wanted to know for sure. You never know if you got it or you don't got it. You might think you got a cold and it might be something else, you know. So it's always good to get tested. And the Sand Hills Medical Foundation will be out testing in Pageland on Thursday at the Chamber of Commerce building. Then they'll be back in McBee every Tuesday for as long as necessary. Atrium Health continues to bring its mobile COVID-19 testing sites to some of the community's most underserved areas. And today they'll be at the Greenville Memorial AME Zion Church on Monteith Drive in Hidden Valley. They'll also be at the Greater Mount Sinai Baptist Church on West Boulevard in West Charlotte. Both of those locations will be open from 10 until 4. In the town of Mooresville, saying thank you to hospital workers today on the first day of National Nurses Week. Tonight, they'll be driving by to show their appreciation for their dedication and sacrifice during this pandemic. You'll see them outside of Lake Norman Regional Medical Center and from 630 until 730 during the shift change. Well, COVID-19 is creating major challenges for local county and city budgets because the money generated from your tax dollars, it is way down. On Monday, we told you Charlotte City Manager Marcus Jones was able to close a $21.8 million gap by eliminating vacant positions and holding open some jobs. Last week, Mecklenburg County Manager Dita DiOrio said the county would have to dip into its reserves. The North Carolina State Treasurer said every local government is trying to make decisions. There are some uh, cities, for example, that are not giving, getting any uh, COVID-19 money, who are facing tremendous sales tax shortfalls. And the State Treasurer says if local governments do borrow money or dip into their reserves, then they need a plan to repay it. It is not just governments feeling the pinch from coronavirus. The pandemic is also costing airlines, we're talking $10 billion a month. And that's according to the New York Times. The head of Airlines for America will testify at a Senate hearing scheduled for today. He says more than 100,000 employees are working reduced hours or they've taken a pay cut. All this because air traffic is down 95% and more than 3,000 planes are grounded.